Jason Dorsey from CGK. You've just finished your keynote presentation at the Hedner Conference. I have to say, watching you on stage is a bit like trying to drink from a, a fountain or water fountain. <laughs> it's, it's very energetic. What, uh, what was the experience like for you? It was fantastic. You know, I love sharing our research, all our new discoveries around Gen Z as travelers and consumers and influencers, and also cutting through all the myths around millennials. You know, there's so much out there that's just nonsense. And, you know, with Hedna and, and the roles and responsibilities that people here, they need real data that they can make decisions on and they should have a good time too so it's nice to do both yeah great you mentioned about the millennials or essentially all generations they they've really been used to or the the they only know what they know mm -hmm. in, in that sense so mm -hmm. when millennials for example have uh, internet or phones mm -hmm. they don't know anything before that or mobile phones I should yeah. say their experience is from that point on mm -hmm. so it's it's very interesting in that trying to understand the the generation behind understanding the generation that they've that they they've got ahead of them, it's like, it's really different dynamic for, for a lot of people to get their heads around. Yeah, we, we call it generational context, which is the idea of being able to see your own generation through the lens of other generations and then, and then kind of stepping out of your generation to look across the generations. And it's particularly important when you have generations such as millennials and Gen Z who have such a different view of the world than say Gen X or boomers, particularly when it relates to technology. So as I shared today, you know, Gen Z, the youngest Gen Z, do not remember a time before FaceTime and using videos on phones. Millennials, many of them don't remember a time before they could always shop for travel using a mobile device or certainly using the internet. So they don't even appreciate how great they have it right now. And creating this context helps executives and leaders and marketers to be able to say, okay, so this is what normal means to them, and this is how we need to think about adapting, and don't just take our old playbook and try to apply it, because we know that that does not work. Yeah, great. You also mentioned that Gen Z is, being, is slightly more fiscally pragmatic than previous generations. Mm -hmm. Could you just go into that a little bit in a bit more detail and, and, and give uh, the viewer, viewers what you mean on that exactly? Yeah, um, what we uncovered about Gen Z is that they grew up very heavily influenced by the Great Recession. Now, not in the way a lot of people are talking about. There's people out there saying, oh, Gen Z really suffered through the Great Recession in the workforce. No, oh, they didn't. They were 12, okay? But their parents struggled through the Great Recession. Maybe their parents came home and talked about the stress and layoffs at work and people losing houses. And it was a very important time in Gen Z's maturation because they were young that it really impacted their value system. And as a result, what our research shows and this is not just research in the US, but research we've done around the world, we see that Gen Z is much more fiscally pragmatic or fiscally conservative. They want more value or utility from the money that they spend. So for example, where millennials are all about buy experiences, Gen Z is much more about buy stuff. Stuff lasts longer and get it at a good price. And we see Gen Z even driving thrift store sales and really trying to create utility from their spending. In fact, our research showed, one of our big national studies, that 12% of Gen Z is already saving for retirement. Another study we did on Gen Z, all of which is on our website, shows that a majority of Gen Z, if they receive $500, a majority of Gen Z would save all $500. Can you imagine being a teenager and saying that? So Gen Z is very different in how they view money and spending, and they're bringing that into travel and everything else that they do. Excellent. So just to wrap it up, in three, what would be three key takeaways that you'd want the audience from this morning's session to take away with them? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. Uh, what I would say, number one takeaway, is generations are clues and not a box, but they're incredibly powerful and predictive clues when they're backed by research. And being a research firm, for us, it's all about separating myth from truth to uncover the real clues. Number two, Gen Z is not Millennials 2.0. Gen Z is completely different. Different parenting, different technology that's normal to them. The oldest members of Gen Z are already 23 years old and they're gonna bring tremendous change. And then number three, when it comes to Millennials, a lot of what is said about this generation is simply not true. But what is true is that the average Millennial is already over the age of 30 and our research at the Center for Generational Kinetics shows that Millennials are splitting into two different generations. You put it all together, this is an incredibly exciting time to be in the travel business and understanding accurately what these generations bring and how to best engage them. It's such an important time to do that, and I'm thrilled to be able to share that at Hedna. Fantastic. Jason Dorsey, thank you very much. Great to have you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye.